Taimora smiles upon those who live a life of daring and action and is happy to award them with good luck and fortune. I am Ben Dignan and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. To start the episode, I would like to fess up to a glaring mistake in the last episode that I was making continuously. I assumed that the Greek deity, Taiki, was pronounced Taish, based solely on how the name was written. I will admit to knowing very little about the Greek pantheon, but going forward I will make sure to always check the pronunciation of such figures rather than just assuming. Titles some of the titles Timora goes by are Lady Luck, The Lady Who Smiles, Our Smiling Lady, Taiki's Fair Haired Daughter, and Peshaba's Bright Sister. Portfolio and Domains Timora's portfolio includes good fortune, victory, skill, adventurers, and adventuring. Timora's domain in 5th edition is Trickery. Appearance and Manifestations In earlier editions, Taimora was described as a short-haired tomboy with a mischievous look. Starting in 3rd edition, she was described as a tall, graceful woman with long platinum hair. She still retains her playful personality, but has a more regal bearing, wearing a modest crown and expensive robes. She also has been depicted as a halfling rogue by the many halflings who worship her. Some tieflings have claimed to witness Timora as a tiefling herself and have taken to calling her the Dark and Devilish Lady of Fortune. Timora has different weapons at her disposal. In 2nd edition, she could form a plus 3 longsword from a tear of silver that comes from one of her eyes. The sword functions as a luck blade with three or less wishes attached to it. Timora calls the sword Silver Tear. In 3rd edition, her favorite weapon is described as a spinning coin that could be thrown much like a shuriken. These spinning weapons were plus five we weapons in 3rd edition. In battle, Timora never fails a saving throw and spells against her always do minimum damage. Once per turn, she can deal maximum damage with a spell or weapon attack. Any game of chance occurring within 100 yards of her are affected whereby improbable results occur with startling regularity. She is immune to any illusion, charm, and mind control spells cast against her. Timora can sense an act of good fortune or turn of good fortune that occurs on Toral. She has the capability of creating any magic item of significant worth that can aid in a creature's saving throws. Timora may manifest in the shape of a silver bird or a silver pegasus on Toral. It is said her influence may be witnessed around a favored gambler. Such gamblers are outlined in a silver glow that is only perceptible to the gambler themselves. Personal History as I have already admitted, I do not know much about the Greek pantheon, and I did not realize Tyche was a member of the Greek pantheon at the time. In the Planescape sourcebook on Hollowed Ground, it is explained that Tyche came to Toral to keep herself alive from the other Greek gods who she had a falling out with. Going against the origin story of Bashaba and Timora presented in the Bashaba episode, Taiki made the conscious decision to split herself into two aspects represented in the deities of Taimora and Bashaba. It is only the people of Toro who believe Taiki was killed and two new deities rose to take her place. The Greek god Hermes is reportedly or was reportedly trying to romance Taimora in the hopes of learning about the fate of Taiki. Conversely, Thais and Pantheons, a 3rd edition Forgotten Realm supplement, changed Timor's origin story, slightly telling how Azuth learned of Moander's corruption of Tyche through the Pale Tesseract. The supplement also supplies more details of the initial fight between Bashaba and Timora after they arose from the split 
into Tyche. Bashaba cursed the names of Lathander, Azus, Selun, and Timora. Bashaba left in smoke and swearing all the while. Timora simply shrugged and frowned, not thinking too much about Bashaba's words. During the time of troubles in 1358 Dale Reckoning, when the gods of Faerun were brought down to walk on Toril, Timora set up in the lady's house, a Timoran temple in the city of Arabel in northern Kormir. The time of troubles was a dangerous period, and Timora offered a reassurance to the people around her. This only added to the popularity of her faith among the people of Faerun. In 1384 Dale Reckoning, a demi power known as Seamorph and the deity Tyr were at odds. At the suggestion of another deity, soon, Timora was to marry the deity Tyr to alleviate the friction now present between the different powers of the Upper Plains. Thanks to what is thought to be the deity Cyrix meddling, a misunderstanding between Tyr and another deity, Helm, led to blows. After Helm was slain at the hands of Tyr, Timora reportedly came to live with Tyr in his own realm. With the events of the Second Sundering, and the rebirth of some dead deities, and the Outer Plains fitting once more into the Great Wheel cosmological model, it is unknown whether Timora still resides with Tyr or has returned back to Arborea. That will be for the Dungeon Master to decide, or until we are presented with future details in a Forgotten Realms novel or supplement. Personality Timora is a chaotic good deity. It is said in comparison to Bishaba, Timora ended up with Tyche's grace and kindness. She is fond of celebration and general merriment. Timora can be fickle and somewhat of a prankster, but such acts are done in good humor, never with malice or hatred in mind. Timora reportedly has had lovers and relationships with other good aligned deities and many mortals, always ending such relationships on good terms. Timora also has a casual on-again, off-again relationship with Brandubaris, a halfling deity who also favors tricks and daring endeavors. To this day, it is rumored that she has access to a portal to the Greenfields, the realm of the halfling pantheon. Personal Realms Depending on the cosmological model your campaign follows, Timora may be on different planes of existence. If your campaign follows the Great Wheel Cosmological model used in 1st edition, 2nd edition, and now reintroduced in 5th edition, Timora resides on the plane of Arborea, on the lair of Arvindor, aka Olympus, and in the realm of Brightwater. Brightwater is a realm encompassed by an entire sprawling urban environment. Here the denizens are always in a celebratory mood gambling, and drinking always in good spirits. Timora laid down the groundwork to create the realm, and it is inhabited by five other deities. Brightwater is home to many Bakai. Bakai are celestial creatures who are known for their revels and hedonistic be behaviors. They have some beast-like qualities that place them halfway between a humanoid and a satyr. The Bakai on Brightwater are less destructive than some of their counterparts, but by no means less jubilant. Brightwater's architecture is varied, with shacks standing next to mansions and estates. There is a palpable aura of excitement and youthful vigor felt around the realm. Brightwater is separate from Mount Olympus, which exists on the same level of Olympus. Some of the Greek gods do not come to Brightwater out of protest, considering it to be an eyesore, but others are happy to come to Brightwater and participate in the fun. Brightwater is divided into different sectors, and each deity claims their own sector. Timora presides over the quarter of the Great Wheel, by far the most popular sector in Brightwater. Here there is a great deal of gambling, boasts, and oration on street corners and halls. There is a midway around the buildings of the quarter where races are held. With the introduction of the World Tree Cosmological Model in 3rd edition, 
bright water shifted into becoming its own plane, though retaining all of its key characteristics. In 4th edition, with the shift to the World Axis Cosmological Model, Timora now resided on the gates of the moon. Here various islands hung above a silver sea. Each island was claimed by a deity. Timora's island was known as the Great Wheel, where seven smaller islands were connected together via a system of bridges. Allies and Allegiances Timora claims Lothander, Saloon, Shondacool, and Finder Wyvernspur as allies. Enemies Bashaba is Timora's greatest foe. Bashaba aims to destroy Timora outright. Timora only looks to humiliate Bashaba and ruin her plans at every turn. Bane, Loviatar, and the deceased deity Moander are also foes of Timora. Deity and Avatar Stat Blocks You can find a 3rd edition stat block for Timora as a deity in the Face and Pantheon supplement. You can find a 2nd edition stat block for Timora's avatar in the Face and Avatar supplement. And for 3rd edition, a stat block for avatar in the Faiths and Pantheons supplement. Symbols Timora has three recorded symbols. In 1st edition and 2nd edition, Timora's symbol was described to be a featureless disc of silver. A less commonly seen but still acknowledged symbol of Timora is a slowly turning sphere of ever bright silver. In 3rd edition, the symbol of Timora was revised somewhat. It is still described as a silver coin, though now featuring the face of Timora upon it surrounded by shamrocks. In 5th edition, the symbol of Timor is now described as simply a face-up coin, much more back in line with 1st edition and 2nd edition. Central Dogma While different interpretations of doctrine are welcome and espoused by the different Timoran temples, there is an underlying dogma that all in the church is subscribed to. This has been taken from the 3rd edition's Faiths and Pantheon supplement. One should be bold, for to be bold is to live. A brave heart and a willingness to take risks beat out a carefully wrought plan nine times out of ten. Place yourself in the hands of fate and trust to your own luck. Bear and conduct yourselves as your own masters, showing your good or bad fortune as confidence in the lady. Chase your own unique goals, and the lady aids the chase. Without direction or goals, you soon know the embrace of Bashaba, for those on no set course are at the mercy of misfortune, which has no mercy at all. Presence of the Faith Worshippers of Timora can be found across all nine alignments. Personally, I don't agree with that point that was made in one of the supplements, but that's up for a dungeon master to decide. Her worshippers typically include rogues, gamblers, adventurers, all varieties of risk takers, the harpers, and a fair amount of halflings. The daring in the Forgotten Realms adore Timora, as their influence is said to be seen in near misses and successful follies. Fortune favors the bold. This is the motto her followers hold dear to their hearts. Her worshippers practice a belief known as the Lady's Way or the Lady's Joy. This is a belief that despite her unpredictable influence and boons, Timora's luck still will come to serve them well in many, but not all, their endeavors. Some will invoke Bashaba's and Timora's names in the same breath while attempting a task, though some sages think this only serves to anger both deities. The Timoran church has a long relationship with the Harpers. For the uninitiated, the Harpers are an organized faction with a long history in the Forgotten Realms. The Harpers work for the good of the peoples of Faerun. Along with the Timoran Church, the Harpers receive assistance from a good number of other faiths. Timora is a popular Faerunian deity amongst the halflings of the Forgotten Realms. Her influence is seen by some in Halfling's Knack for luck and good fortune. There are tales of her 
aiding Brandabaras, the halfling deity of thievery, on many different occasions. Many halflings take Tamar to be a part of their own pantheon, and that the humans only have been conned into thinking that Timor is part of the Faerunian pantheon. It is common practice for Timoran clergy and worshippers to greet one another by touching holy symbols. Often they will embrace one another to do so. Hierarchy and Structure of the Clergy All genders and all sexes are held to be equal amongst the clergy of Timora. Coincidentally, though, more women are reported to operate as the heads of temples across Faerun. Titles differ and change continuously throughout the various temples of Timora. Though addressing a Timoran clergy member by Lord Priest or Lady Priestess is a common practice throughout Faerun, the honorific of High is granted to those of high standing in the church. A few priestesses of Timora are known as the Atalara. These priestesses were possessed by Tomora directly to speak with her faithful for a little time. It is said that during this possession, that the priestess's hair turns a deep blue and her eyes turn a bright silver. There was an attempt to codify and organize the separate temples of Timora in Faerun by a high priest by the name of Deramos Lothur, after Timora left Deramos's temple. Deramos was the head of the ladies' house in Arabelle during the times of trouble. Deramos felt it was his duty to model the faith off the model of his temple, and his temple to serve as the center of power for an organized ecclesiastical structure. This was met with much resistance, and whether any degree of success was accomplished by Deramos is unknown. Responsibilities and Duties of Clergy and Worshippers Clergy are to espouse action over inaction and taking chances rather than feeling regret. This message is tempered by reminding parishioners that there is such a thing as being too reckless and to avoid doing things of little meaning. Clergy members are then bound to help those that they learn are about to or have tried to attempt a risky task. They are to help such risk takers with healing services, food, and common magic items. Many of the clergy travel avidly, tending to the wounded and helping those that they come across. The clergy provide counsel to those who seem to be down on their luck in certain aspects of their lives in order to try and inspire the desire to go out and have luck find them. Orders and Priestly Bodies Collectively, the Timorian clergy are known as luck bringers. The Fellows of the Free Fate or the TRIFs, for short, are an organized group of clergy members who work to counter the evil plots of the Basrabin clergy. In particular, they are fond of spoiling the endeavors of the Blackfingers, the all-male assassin group used by the Basrabin church. Any Timoran clergy member may join the TRIFs, but they need to be vouched for by a senior clergy member. The testers are a radical body of Timoran priests who are known to take absurd chances in their endeavors in the belief that it will further their favor with Timora. The other Timoran clergy do not hold any animosity for the testers. Rather, they are always waiting on the sidelines to help the testers if things go awry. There is a heretical group in the Timoran faith that has splintered off from the church who are known as the Fate Makers. This group has been formed with other splintered groups from other fate-based deities and their associated faiths in Faerun. The Fate Maker's philosophy is that all these chance and luck-based deities are one and the same being, and through them, the Fate Makers can learn to alter chance and fate at their whim. Formal Tyomoran worshippers and clergy actively seek out to bring down the Fate Makers because they suspect Bashaba's influence through the formation of the Fate Makers. Appearance and Dress The Timoran clergy favor blue and silver in their dress and vestments. The formal dress of the Timoran clergy differs from temple to temple across Faerun. Usually, it comes down to the personal tastes of the temple leader and the climate conditions the temple finds itself in. Regardless, Blue and silver will feature heavily in their dress. 
Commonly, clergy members will wear their holy symbols on a necklace. While adventuring, Timoran clergy are free to wear what they want, though blue and silver clothing are commonly worn. Reportedly, high boots are particularly popular among the clergy members. Some still wear their holy symbol around their necks, but others wear smaller symbols around their ankles, wrists, or hanging from a belt. Rituals As the worship of Timora is not standardized, there are no real rituals that all Timoran clergy members follow. There are discrepancies from one Timoran temple to the next. That said, Midsummer is the most important festival on the calendar for Timoran worshippers. While other members revel and party, other Timoran clergy use such a celebration as a way to connect with members of the Harpers and other allied faiths to talk plans. Starfall holds great significance as well for the church. Timoran clergy believe Starfall to be the date Timora was born out of Taiki, though Bashaban clergy do not hold this to be true. It is on this day that promotions and rewards are bestowed on clergy members. Clerics of Timora meditate on their spells in the morning. General locations of temples and shrines. Given Timora's association with adventurers, the clergy have taken it upon themselves to establish shrines and temples in locations where adventurers frequent. Adventurers know that they are always welcome to these temples, and as a result, the temples benefit from the coin exchanged for their services. Common adventuring items are made in these temples and sold at a profit. It is not unusual to find a Timoran temple that stocks holy water and healing potions, for example. Some clergy members will invest substantial funds into certain adventuring parties. This is done as a way to promote the good fortune of Timor and bring in more worshippers. If the party returns successfully, clergy members will openly celebrate the success of the group and, spe and speak of Timor's divine influence. Such schemes may backfire if an adventuring party fails in their task, however. Many gambling dens and parlors have shrines to Timora. It is not unusual for Timoran clergy to, fre to frequent gambling establishments either. Given the large amount of coin that enters into the coffers of the Timoran temples, each temple forges its own independent identity separate from that of other Timoran temples. Specific Locations Right now, I'd just like to point out what I believe to be a discrepancy between the various sources. In the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, it says the following. Priests of Timor and temples devoted to Lady Luck are scarce, since her faith tends not to stress a need for intermediaries. Nothing in Timor's history would suggest to me either that a substantial drop in Timoran followers or institutions happened and as the following list of shrines and temples is presented to you, it will prove just how present the Timoran church is in Faerun. One of, if not the most renowned temple Timora, is the Lady's House in Arabel. Here Timora herself resided for some time during the Time of Troubles. The House of the Lady in Shadowdale is the oldest temple in this region. Reportedly, it is built over the ruins of a temple to Taiki. The house of the lady is adorned with a golden dome and is unmistakable to those adventurers seeking out its services. Other named temples and shrines to Timor include the Lap of Luck in Scardale, the Towers of Good Fortune in Suzale, the Sheltering Hand in Weymut, Lady's Luck Tower in Yohan, the Gates of Good Fortune in Mallmaster, the Ladies' Happy Hall in Pro Camper, the House of Hope in Tantris, the Ladies' Hall in Baldur's Gate, the House of Luck in Glister, the House of the Lady in Shadowdale, Fair Fortune Hall in Daggerford, and the Happy Hall of Fortuitous Happenstance in Yartar. Unnamed temples to Timora can be found in Harrowdale. Tilverton, Ordulin, Urm Lasper, Ravensbluff, Waterdeep, 
in Silvery Moon. Unnamed but known shrines to Tamora can be found in Tasseldale, Marsember, Derloon, Serloon, Melvant, Zentol Keep, High Hasper, King's Reach, Kurth, Yerlarfon, Tazir, El Turel, Mirabar, and Phandalin. Character Options as a brief aside, I just wanted to point out a character option I missed for Bashaban Priest in 2nd edition in the last episode. In the supplement Warriors and Priests of the Realms, players can find the breakdown for the Wormluck of Bashaban Priest. For 2nd edition, you can find the features for the Luckbringer, especially Priest whose patron deity is Timora, in the supplement Faiths and Avatars. You can also find the breakdown for two Timoran Priests, the Favored Priest and the Luck Rider, in the Warriors and Priests of the Realm supplement. For 3rd edition, the breakdown for the Auspician Prestige class can be found in the Faiths and Pantheon supplement. I touched on this Prestige class in, excuse me, Prestige class in the Bashaba episode. I repeat that Auspicians can be found worshipping either Bashaba or Timora. They are able to bend chance and luck to their will. The Harper Protégé regional background that makes being a Timoran worshipper a requirement alongside other deities can be found in the supplement Champions of Valor. The Initiate of Timora feat can be found in Champions of Valor. In Player's Guide to Faerun, players can find the Harper Agent Prestige class and Harper Paragon Prestige class which follows the same prerequisites as the Harper Protégé regional background. A Timoran enchantment for weapons called Doom Warding is also documented in this supplement. This enchantment bestows the weapon with charges that can be spent to allow a free attack on the player's turn or allows the player to reroll any of their dice. For a fourth edition, you can find a series of Timoran related feats in Dragon Magazine issue 388. Continuing my trend of building backgrounds for each deity, here are my suggested characteristics for a Timoran Worshipper background for 5th edition. For your two skill proficiencies, I would recommend taking Persuasion and Insight. For your language and tool proficiencies, I would suggest taking a gaming set, either taking the dice or playing cards gaming set, and then one language of your choice. For equipment, I would suggest taking the Acolytes or Faction Agents equipment from uh, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide if you're intending to play as a member of the Harpers. For the background ribbon feature, I would take one of either three, the Shelter of the Faithful feature from the Acolyte, the Folk Heroes Rustic Hasp Hospitality feature, or the Faction Agents Safe Haven feature. Here's a list of subclasses I think would be thematically appropriate for an NPC or PC to take if they are a worshipper of Bashaba. Uh, to start off with, for the cleric, uh, there's the tricky do trickery domain. For bards, I would take a look at the College of Valor and College of Swords bard, who are bards who particularly are fond of action and those who look to inspire others with tales of daring that others have participated in. For the fighter, I would suggest the champion subclass. This might be a bit of a stretch on my part, but perhaps someone could flavor the influence of the champion's improved and superior criticals as good luck being given out to them in combat by Tamora. For the monk, while there are no known martial art academies associated with Timora, I could easily see a tradition favoring the way of the drunken master. Rogues. Rogues are beloved by Timora and her church. Thus, I feel the thief, the arcane trickster, the mastermind, the swashbuckler, and inquisitive rogue all fit the mold. The scout and assassin being kind of outside that wheelhouse just because of their, because of the traditional themes associated with them. For the sorcerer, I would take a look at the wild magic sorcerer, uh, someone who has been exposed to a divine influence from Tamora, who can who can manipulate some degree of fate. And finally, for the wizard, the school of enchantment and school of illusion wizards who are fond of using their powers for good and good, nat and good nature pranks on the side. Dungeon Master Options 
Uh, to start, um, there is no stat block for the Bakai, which I described earlier in the episode in 5th edition supplements, though they are present in the 3rd edition Fiend Folio if you want to go look for that. Um, for other monsters, in the Monster Manual, uh, some of the creatures reportedly used by Tomora include fairy dragons and unicorns, and the Pegasus stat block is also found in the supplement. In Mordekind's Tome of Foes, I would take a look at the Eidolon, along with its associate stat block of the sa- secret statue. Uh, the following is just a list of different NPC stat blocks that you can make use of from 5th edition supplements. So from the Monster Manual, I take a look at the Acolyte, the Priest, and the Spy. The Spy, of course, well not of course, but could be someone who is a Harper themselves. Uh, from Volo's Guide to Monsters, take a look at the Master Thief or the Swashbuckler. And finally from Waterdeep Dragon Heist, there is the Black Viper who is a accomplished thief slash assassin slash agent, however you want to flavor it in your game. And of course, the swashbuckler stat block can be found in that supplement as well. Now moving on to magic items. So detailed in a second edition supplement called Prayers from the Faithful, there is an item described in there called the Flame of the, S- of the Spirit. Now the flame is a holy relic of the Timoran faith. It is described to be a fair-sized piece of amber that has been carved into the shape of a flame. Oftentimes, people have claimed to see shimmers of light inside the amber despite no visible source within. The flame of the spirit has been lost by the Timoran clergy, and they continue to search for this holy relic. It is said that any loyal Timoran worshipper or clergy who learn of its location will do their very best to return it to the church uh, using whatever good aligned means necessary. Upon being touched by a true worshipper of Timora, whether they are clergy or not, the amber shifts into the form of a tablet levitating in the air or staying put if placed upon a surface. However, if someone not of Timora's faith tries to touch it, the amber will emit a wash of flame over the individual dealing a respectable amount of fire damage to them over continuous rounds. The flame of the spirit is said to be as old as the Netheral Empire and has a storied history. It has passed through several different hands over the years, uh, including Timoran clergy, thieves, wizards, and dragons. It was last reported seen in 1244 Dale Reckoning, when Mert, the moneylender of Skullport, encountered a unnamed mage attempting to sell the flame. The mage was able to flee deep into the Underdark, and that was the last time anyone recognized and told of seeing the gem. The spells associated and written on the flame of the spirit can be found in the supplement. It is claimed that Timora may sometimes work her influence through the stone, granting the bear a spell at the right moment to help them in a given situation. Now for 5th edition supplements, I just will provide you with a list of various magic items that would be of relevance to the Timor Church and Timor's followers. So out of the DMG or Dungeon Master's Guide, I'd take a look at the Cloak of Invisibility, Dust of Disappearance, Dust of Sneezing and Coughing, Gloss of Thievery, the Lock Blade, Oil of Slipperiness, Potion of Heroism, Ring of Feather Falling, Ring of Evasion, Ring of Invisibility, Ring of Spell Turning, Ring of Three Wishes, Stone of Good Luck, Talisman of Pure Good, and the Wand of Polymorph. Out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything, the following common magic items might be of use to you. Uh, the Mystery Key, the Wand of Scowls, or the Wand of Smiles. And finally, from the Waterdeep Dragon Heist Adventurer, I'd also take a look at the Bracer of Flying Daggers. Alright, and with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to Religion and the Realms once again. If you're interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, uh, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and follow podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. These episodes are also uploaded to YouTube as well. The podcast YouTube channel can be found under Religion in the Realms. 
If you wish to get in touch with me, my personal twi- Twitter handle is at Shiv's Embrace. For those interested, I have posted a link in the video description on YouTube to a Discord server I have set up. For audio listeners, you can find the link to the invite pinned on the podcast Twitter page. Next episode will feature Sirik, the deity of strife and lies. Until next time, may Timora look kindly upon your dice rolls, Helm protect you, and Lathander light your path. Music for this episode, Galway, by Kevin MacLeod, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.